Yes, so we have a couple of videos about apartment locating. I know several people have had questions about how to get into the industry. So um, I'm going to give you a perspective of how to get paid as an apartment locator. Priscilla, what's your background? So I actually made the jump from property manager to apartment locator. So I come from the side, the other side, the side that processes the payments and the, uh, you know, the receiving the invoice and the whole process of making sure a locator got paid. So I get that perspective of things. Right. So um, basically we're going to kind of explain to you how to actually get paid as an apartment locator. I know a lot of real estate agents choose not to do apartment locating because they have no idea how to get paid, but we're going to give you a little bit of insight to that. So first thing I do when I get a lease is I send a lease verification to the property. You want to make sure that your uh, referral listed you down on the application and the guest card because that is a big requirement for a lot of apartment communities. They require your name to be listed onto the application. If you are not listed, they will not pay you. So it is very, very important that your client lists you on there. Yeah, so, and that's something good to mention. Um, your client has to put you on the application where it says you were referred by and also whenever they tour. So whenever your client actually applies, they'll send what's called a lease verification. And essentially all it is, is like Priscilla says, it's just confirming that your client um, listed you and you're their reference. Um, and it'll ask the property management company what apartment they moved into or going to move into, what their commission is, or what the commission is that you're going to get paid. Um, it has about like eight different questions. So whenever your client contacts you and says, hey, I went ahead and applied here, the next step is sending a lease verification. So after that, what do you do? So and also, well, just to piggyback off what she said, yeah. One of the most important parts of a lease verification is the commission because properties change their commission structures all the time. They do. <laughs> all the time. I'm talking like every other day they can change it. So you want to make sure that you're getting paid the commission they told you over the phone. And so this is a in writing guaranteed way to make sure that happens. Um, there have been times in my career where I had said a certain commission because that was the structure at that point, then it changed. Then they invoiced me and it just, I couldn't pay them for that amount anymore. But because I had sent a lease verification that they followed up with, I had to go buy it. I had to go buy it. It was in writing. So um, it's very important to get that uh, just to make sure that you're getting paid what you were actually told. So, right. And that's a good thing to make note of um, because, like she said, commission structures do change all of the time. So, that's the only thing that protects you um, is a lease verification. So, that's why, as soon as your client tells you that they've applied somewhere, you need to send that lease verification because, like Priscilla said, commission structures can change all of the time. And you want to make sure that you're getting the promised commission. Um, and the only way to do that is to get that in writing from that lease verification. So once you get a lease verification, essentially you have um, to basically wait on your client to move in, which sometimes is immediately, sometimes it's two months out. But once your client moves in, what do you do? So once your client moves in, then at that point you send them the invoice. So you invoice the property for your client. Uh, it all depends on different management companies. Some management companies will pay 30 days after moving. Some will pay 60 days. I have, there's one management company that pays 90 days. There's, there's some that there's pay <laughs> like two days after your client moves yeah. in. It's very rare. Yeah, but, but it happens. So you just really got to stay on top of it. So uh, it's, that's, and that kind of goes down, to, goes back to, you know, what locating company you want to work for. Um, some you'll have accounting departments that'll do it for you. Some you kind of have to do it yourself. So make sure uh, when you're shopping around for the perfect locating company that you take that into consideration as well because that can become a job in its own like you're a bill collector at that point so yes and as a lot of people have seen me almost go into tears being so frustrated trying to get paid by an apartment complex um, a lot of times you get the runaround but that's why you need to have everything in writing you need to have that lease verification once your client moves in you're gonna send that invoice um, and of course it's best practice to call that property make sure that they got the invoice ask them if there's anything else that they need to do because there's a lot of different systems that sometimes you have to be set up with um, to be considered a vendor, whether that be ops technology, net vendor, Basilco. Uh, Basilco. I mean, third party, third party companies. There are so many third party companies now that are handling the invoicing for properties. Um, and there's a lot of processes or a lot of steps to take now. It's not just simply submitting the invoice. Like you got to get them through your W-9 if you're not set up as a vendor. You got to make sure you're set up as a vendor. You got to make sure the invoice is uploaded property. Um, there's a lot. And then coming from the management standpoint, the best advice I can give you is follow up, follow up, follow up. Because I know you, it's, you're thinking this is your invoice. This is your money. Like this is your paycheck. But from our, I, from our standpoint, we are receiving hundreds of locator invoices. There have been plenty of times 
where they have, it's gotten lost in the stack or it's gotten the email has gotten lost or I never received it. Um, so it's always best to just stay on top of it and to try not to get frustrated with the management company because the last thing you want to do is create a bad name with that company itself and they don't want to work with you. So yeah, so and that's I think a lot of people have been uh, guilty of getting very frustrated with management companies um, just because we want to get paid. So essentially. Um, just to recap, you're going to get a lease verification whenever your client tells you that they applied. You're going to submit an invoice, which basically is going to have all the info from the lease verification. You're going to submit an invoice for your commission that you're supposed to get paid after your client moves in. Um, and then you're going to call the property to follow up to make sure that they got that invoice, see if there's anything else that they need. As Priscilla mentioned, most communities are going to want your broker's license and also a W-9. So that's just one thing you need to ask, like, hey, did you get my invoice? Is there anything else that I need to do? Do you need any other documents from me? They'll tell you if you need to set yourself up um, with any of these other vendor companies, but not all companies require you to do vendor setups. Essentially, in general, what you really, really need is this lease verification when your client signs a lease or when your client applies and then also an invoice. Um, and once you basically send your invoice, as Priscilla said, a lot of properties pay in different time structures, but you just need to continue to follow up um, until until you get paid. Until you get that money. <laughs> <laughs> so that um, is just a little insider's look as to if you are a realtor and you want to go um, and you know transition and do some apartment locating, like I said, it's a big thing that a lot of people ask is how do you actually get paid? So this is just a little step-by-step. -step. Um, I will note, um, sometimes you, never can get a hold of your prop the property manager you can't get a hold of the on-site team so i have been known from time to time to contact corporate <laughs> um and have to ask her hey who's the regional manager for so and so property um and then have to escalate up to the regionals just to find out exactly what's going on because there's some awesome managers and there's yeah no and i've been guilty i mean i was in this industry i was a property manager for six years so there have been a few times where i was definitely guilty of not paying the invoice in a timely manner uh, there's plenty there's a lot of reasons as to why managers do that but the fastest way to get me to pay an invoice was to definitely go to corporate <laughs> uh, that being said always maintain a professional manner because there have been times where a locator just totally lost it on me and i i, I don't have management companies do not have to work with you so uh, whenever that happened my regional at that point said you know what we don't need your services anymore and you don't want that so just be professional i know we know, we know you're upset and frustrated trust me i get it but try to remain professional the entire time and just send that nice little email to corporate and get your money. <laughs> yeah, so that's about it. Um, a, another thing like Priscilla has mentioned, when getting paid with apartments, it can go as fast as like a week or two after your client moves in. More than likely though, it's 30 to 90 days after your client moves in. So that's just something to be aware of when you get into apartment locating that you might not get paid for a while, but um, definitely those checks do start rolling in. So yeah, be patient. Um, let us know in the comments any other questions. And we're happy to answer them where we can. Yeah.